Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be covering scriptable objects. I've covered it a few times in the past on the channel, but those were a long time ago, and there's probably some things I've said in those videos which I don't really agree with now. So this is a more up-to-date video with, you know, me learning more about them, having more experience with using them. And also, I've got a practical example that we're going to go through in this video, where you can use scriptable objects to have damage numbers pop up when you deal damage to characters, and the colour of the text will be based on the damage type you're dealing. Let's jump into it. So this video will be split up into three parts. Part one, I'll be explaining what scriptable objects are, when you should use them, when you shouldn't use them. Then for step two, we'll be writing the code for the damage type scriptable object, as well as a simple little health script to allow us to, you know, press a key to deal some damage. And then when that damage is dealt, we'll have numbers pop up on the screen. Now, obviously after that, you can take it further. You can make the damage numbers move. Currently they just pop onto the screen and then they disappear after a few seconds. You can do with it whatever you like. You know, you can change the damage types. You can have the color of the text be dependent on something else. Uh, obviously there's no healing involved. Maybe you want to have something pop up when you heal. It's up to you to expand it from there. But anyway, when we move on to step three, that'll be the actual demonstration. We'll be setting it up in the Unity scene, adding our scripts and making sure it's all working. So yeah, let's jump into it. So step one, what are scriptable objects? Well, this is going to be quite a short example, but basically in Unity, you have game objects and they have components on, and these components are mono behaviors, okay? Mono behaviors have fields, like this has an enum, and then you've got a color field, and then some text, oh, sorry, some, some numbers here for intensity, for the light, for example, right? That can tweak certain things on there. And mono behaviors are for objects that exist in the scene. But some data that you have in your game doesn't really make sense to be kept in the scene. Um, certain static data like item definitions. So for example, if you've got a game like Minecraft and you've got diamond swords, they'll have some data saved somewhere for what a diamond sword is. And then when you pick it up, you get an instance of it with using um, some template data. The template might be the name of the sword, the durability, but then obviously when you use it, it goes down in durability. But then someone else that acquires a diamond sword has a fresh copy of it with full durability. So you need somewhere to have kind of like the template data that you get when you pick something up, and then you need some runtime data. And scriptable objects are for the non-runtime data. It's the data that you have at design time. So for example, in this video, we're gonna have damage types, and at design time, you pick damage type names and colors, for example. So obviously we haven't coded it yet, but this is a quick sneak peek, I guess. Um, here are the scriptable objects. They are in my project. They are not in the scene. They're in the actual assets. And if you actually go to them, you can open them up in a text editor if you want. So you can, I don't know, open with, let's say, notepad. Okay. If I open that with notepad now, you can actually see some of the metadata about it. But you can also see down here the data I've set, which is name, uh, color, and then the RGB color with the alpha as well. Okay, so it's, you know, human, human readable in there. It's uh, very easy to read, but also obviously it's available to be changed in the inspector, which is where it's easier to change it. And I can then change this name from Earth to whatever else, and I can change the color to be whatever I want. Now this data never changes at runtime. When, when you've built your game, the name of the damage type doesn't change and the color doesn't change. So this is something that is sensible to be uh, used as a scriptable object. And one other thing about scriptable objects is they can be referenced in any scene because they always exist in your assets, you can actually reference them in a scene. But obviously in this scene, I can't reference, for example, a player from a different scene because they're not there. Um, it doesn't make sense. They might not be there when you try and do something with them, but assets will always be there. Uh, scriptable objects will always be there. So all I've done here is I've made some scriptable objects, you know, earth is brown, fire is red, and water is blue. But obviously I can then go create a new damage type and it's made a new asset, or I could have duplicated one of those. And then I can call it whatever I want, and then I can set up the new fields on here. I can also just easily delete them and whatever else. So yeah, that's it for scriptable objects. Um, when you should use them, you should use scriptable objects, as I said, for static data. And you might be tempted into using them for dynamic data because they technically can be used for that, but it's highly advised not to do so. Because one thing about scriptable objects is if you change their data in play, in runtime when, when the game's playing, it saves afterwards. So for example, the game, plays, I change it from being called Earth to something else, I stop, but notice how it's saved. So that's actually quite problematic because if, for example, you're storing your player's health in a scriptable object, which see, I see some people do, then what happens is when you stop playing, the health you know stays at maybe 10, if they've gone down to 10 health. Then when you press play, it's on 10, but you don't want it to be on 10, you want it to be back on full. So then you'd have to write some other code somewhere to reset it to full health. But it just becomes a mess. You, you really shouldn't use scriptable objects for runtime data like that. 
ideally scriptable object data doesn't change at runtime it's something you want to make sure you do some people then think it's good for a save system because obviously when you um stop playing it changes i mean it's it doesn't change so obviously if for example my health goes down i stop playing i start playing again well then the health is saved right but problem is that is only true in the editor if you build your game and send it to someone else and they go play it well that doesn't happen anymore what happens there is when they restart the game, it gets reset to the value it was when you built. So it has different behavior based on whether you're in the editor and when you've built, and that's quite problematic. That's why it's much safer, and I highly recommend you don't change anything on here in the actual game itself. Don't write any code that can change stuff on here. And I'm going to mention it a little bit more in step two when we code it, um, a way to stop yourself accidentally changing it in code. But yeah, let's get into that step now. So, step two, coding. Well, here is our damage type scriptable object that I was just showing you, okay? I'm gonna leave this on screen and just go through and explain how it all works. Um, we'll start off here, actually. This is the class called damage type, and it inherits from scriptable object. That's what makes it a scriptable object. Then we can create the assets in our game. But to actually be able to right-click, create new damage type, I actually have to have this line here. So this is an attribute on the class that tells it to um, create this in the asset menu and I want the file, so whenever I make a new instance, for it to be called new damage type. And then the menu name is just damage type. So if I change this, it would change whatever this says here, okay? So you could actually do um, like combat slash damage type. And if you go back into Unity and give it a second to recompile, it actually puts it into a new kind of drop down here. So inside create, inside combat, we've got damage type. Okay, that's up to you to set that up how you want. And then we've got some fields here, which you'll be familiar with. This is how you have variables on a class, or you might be used to using public, whatever. But I'd highly recommend using privates if you're just changing it in the inspector, okay? This is the only place you change it is in the inspector. So you serialize field private, okay? And this is the name, and this is the color, okay? And then what I've got over here is I've got some getters. Now you might be used to seeing it like this. So instead of the name one being how it is, it might be name get uh, return name. But that's a bit more bit more coding to do the same thing. The only reason there's a problem is because that exists um, and there's no semicolon. So these two lines actually do the same thing. So I'm used to using it the shorthand way. It's probably better. And all I'm saying is when I uh, try and get the name variable from this class, return this name. What it means is I can't actually change the name. This, this is just a getter. I can't set it. There's no way I can change the name variable in this class from outside, which is what I want. I don't want to change stuff in here at all at runtime. Same, I can grab the color, but I can't change the color. So that makes it really safe for when we use it elsewhere, we can't accidentally change it and you know ruin all our data. This is completely protected inside here. It's private to actually do stuff with it and then public to get it, okay? So that's the damage type. And then here is the health script that I've chucked together. Now, as I said, if you want uh, to get access to this code, you can go to my GitHub link is down below. Go to the getting started of Unity thing, and then it's inside the scriptable objects folder. If I can show you really quick, we've got tutorials. The last one was about game objects and components. And this time it's about scriptable objects. Then inside scripts, health. Okay, so here it is. We've got a mono behavior. It's going to stick on our player. And this isn't the way I would set it up in an actual game. This is purely for the demo. But we have reference to uh, some text using, I'm using Text Mesh Pro, which is just an add-on in Unity. If you don't have it, you go to Window, Package Manager, Text Mesh Pro, but it should always be there with a blank Unity project. Okay, this is the text that's gonna pop up. Then we've got an array of damage types, obviously damage type being the thing we just made. Now, normally you wouldn't have the health store all the different damage types, but because of this example, Every time I deal damage, I want it to just be completely random, like which damage type is random. So I give it an array and it picks from that array. Then in the update, every frame, we say, well, if the player didn't press spacebar, then return, but if they did, deal damage. So effectively, every time I press spacebar, deal damage. Deal damage picks a random number between one and 10, because when you use integers, it's inclusive of the minimum. So it'll be between one and exclusive of the max, which will be 11. So that brings it down to 10. So pick a random number between one and 10, inclusive of one and 10, and then pick a random damage type. So it says, get me a random damage type. I've between index zero and the length of the damage types. Um, I don't have to write minus one here, though you might see when you use arrays, you might use minus one um, because indexes and counts are, count is always one bigger than the max index, but because of how random.range works, it actually excludes the max value. So it's safe to do this. And then now at this point, we've got a random number between one and 10 and a random damage type from this array. 
And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to call spawn damage text, which spawns in the damage text uh, and I'm spawning it at, so there's the prefab and I'm spawning it at the player's position plus one up in the Y axis. And that's because uh, if you spawn it inside the player, then you can't see it. Now there are other ways to go around this. You might change it onto a layer which renders on top or use a different shader or something. But for now, we're just going to make it appear above the player. And then you can ignore this. This is just to uh, give it a rotation. I could equally just write uh, like transform dot rotation. I'll go with that. And then what we do is on the damage text, we set the text to be the amount of damage as a string. So we take maybe 10 damage and turn it into the string 10. And then the color is the color of the damage type. Remember damage type dot color, and that's a getter. I can't say damage type, uh, oops, sorry, damage type dot color is equal to a new color, for example because it's a get only, it's a read only. So that's safe. I can't accidentally change that data. I can only read it. And then we say destroy the game object that the text is on after one second. So the text spawns in, we set the text, we set the color and we say destroy it after one second. Okay, that's the example for this tutorial. And now we're gonna go actually check it in Unity. So over in Unity, I want you to make a new game object. Okay, and we're gonna add the text mesh pro text field, uh, sorry, component. Okay. And then we're going to set the font. Well, this is what I use. Okay. We can look at the different settings over here. I used bold and font size of five. Okay. So set it to bold five. And I think that's all you actually would need to set. Set it to bold five. So let's do it. Here's the text. Let's put some number in. I'm going to set it to bold five. And then I'm actually going to center. Okay. Now this is actually in the ground because it's at zero, zero in the world, but the player is actually at a Y of two. So I'm gonna set it to a Y of three. All right, so that's where the text is gonna appear. Now, once you've got this object, make sure it's all at zero, zero. And then we're going to uh, call it something like, you know, damage text, okay? And we're gonna save it as a prefab by dragging it into our project. Now I already have something called damage text, so I'm just gonna delete the, the one we just made, but I've already got the same thing here. So when you drag that in, you get a number popping up. Maybe you want to set that to a uh, blank, but also just set it to the number. It doesn't matter because we change it in code anyway. Once you've got that prefab on your player object, which for me is just a sphere with the health script on what we, that we wrote, you want to drag in the damage text prefab that we just made. And then for damage types, you want to put some in. Now we don't have any yet, so let's go and make some. Uh, I've got some, but for you guys, you'll want to go to a folder. So in here, I've made a damage types folder just to keep them in. And you just want to right click and make a new damage type. So I'm going to make a new one with you. So damage type underscore, let's call it air. So the air damage type is going to be called air. And it's going to be a light blue, maybe something along there, maybe more of a gray. Okay. Now I've got these different damage types, air, earth, fire, water. And to actually register them for the sake of this example, I'll want to add them to this list. So if I take my new air one and drag it onto the list, it adds it here. So we've got fire, water, earth, and air. These are all the damage types it can pick from when doing the damage. Let's go give it, give it a go. So if I press space, I deal damage, doing a random type out of the different ones we've got, dealing random damage between one and 10. And then one really cool thing about scriptable objects is fire is red, but let's say I want the fire to be a different kind of red. Maybe I want it to be uh, more orange. Okay, let's just pretend we want it to be bright orange. Now, whenever we deal fire, it's bright orange. Notice how there's no more reds. Maybe we want fire to be pink. Okay, there was nothing that was pink earlier, but now we've got pink for fire. So you can actually change that in play mode. And then when you're happy, when you stop play mode, it saves. So that is a really good example of using a scriptable object is to tweak something and have it save. Because normally if you tweak fields in the inspector, they don't save when you actually close. Um, but yeah, that's probably everything to cover for this video. Obviously you guys might have more questions. If you do, feel free to ask down below or join our Discord server and ask there. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like and subscribe and let me know down below what you want to see more videos of. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching and goodbye. But of course, before I go, I've got to thank my patrons. A special thanks to Liz Kimber, Josh Folsom, Beard or Die, Dustin Miller, Francisco Diaz, Rec, Yoris Letta, Hades Zorko, Rene, Boudere, and Marie Baldwin. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, link to my Patreon is down below. If not, there are also links down below to other social media, such as Twitch, Twitter, and Discord, as well as our website. If you could help us out by checking out any of those, following on any of those, that would be greatly appreciated. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.